Hello friends, welcome to BSC Agriculture. If you are coming to my channel for the first time, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Your subscription and likes are always motivating us. Please tell us about our video so your comments can be able to improve our video substance as well as the matter content. So let's move to the video. In this video, we are going to see about the productive cultivation as well as the secondary agriculture. I am going to cover the equipments as well as the components of greenhouse which you use to control the summer cooling as well as winter cooling and natural as well as four ventilations present in the greenhouse and their components. So while seeing a small intro about the greenhouse there is a precise control parameters which are used in the controlling the greenhouse environment and thereby maximize the economic returns from the crops. So these parameters used to have a higher percentage in maintaining the greenhouses and basically the objective of environmental control is maximized to the plant growth so it's how we can able to get the economic yield in this one and the control of greenhouse environments mean the control of temperature light air composition and as well as the nature of root and medium substance for the particular crop to obtain the maximum yield of the particular crop and the yeah, greenhouse is essentially mean to permit at least the partial control of microclimate within them and obviously most of the greenhouses are said to be with partial environmental control which are more common as well as the economical one when compared to the highly advanced ones because each and every small farmers even can able to obtain those partial environmental control in these greenhouses and while seeing about the origin of greenhouse to the present now there is a steady evolution of control measures have been evolved in each and every stages of greenhouse development and while seeing about them in stages there are around five stages in this evolution including the manual control thermostats step controller dedicated microprocessor and computers so these are the five stages of evolution which are being made in the control of greenhouse parameters and the chain of evolution also had bought about the reduction in control labor as well as the improvement in conformity of greenhouse environments to set their points at each and every environment and the benefits achieved from greenhouse are uniformly or better timing and good quality of crops disease control and conservation of energy are said to be done and first we are going to see about the active summer cooling system and the active summer cooling system is mainly achieved by evaporative cooling process made in this greenhouses and the evaporative cooling systems developed are said to be reduced the problems of excess heat which is said to be made in the greenhouse in this process cooling takes place when the heat required for the moisture evaporation is derived from the surrounding environment and which also used to cause a depression in its temperature and the two active summer cooling systems are used to be present are the fan fan and pad system as well as the fog uh, cooling system in this evaporative cooling system the cooling is said to be possible only up to the wet bulb temperature of the incoming air so it's how the cooling mechanisms are said to be made and first we are going to see about the fan and pad cooling system in summer cooling system and the fan and pad um, evaporative cooling system has been available since 1954 and which is also said to be known as the one of the most common cooling system present in the greenhouse era and uh, along the uh, while seeing about the design uh, along one wall of the greenhouse what is said to be passed through pads and are usually placed vertical in the walls so while coming of the air circulation from the fan the heat air are said to be reduced and the cooling is said to be made traditionally the pad is said to be composed of excess cellulose which is wood shirts but today it is commonly made up of toss fluted cellulose material uh, somewhat which is said to be similar to the appearance of corrugated cardboards so it's how the fan and pad cooling system is said to be designed and the excess fans are said to be placed in the opposite wall of the greenhouse and the warm outside air is said to be drawn through the pad so the cooling of particular temperature is said to be maintained in these greenhouses and the supplied water in the pad through the process of evaporation absorbs heat from the air and passing through the pad as well as the surrounding of the pad and frame and which is used to cause the cooling effect in these greenhouses and the vetiver is said to be the natural made mat which is used to act as a cooling pads in these greenhouses and after that we are going to see the fog cooling system and the fog operative cooling system introduced in the time of 1980 in these greenhouses and which is used to operate the 
same cooling principles as the fan and pad cooling system but it used to have a quite different arrangement than the fan and pad cooling system um, in this design a high pressure pumping apparatus which used to generate fog containing water droplets with the mean size of 10 microns using a suitable nozzle materials are said to be made in this fog cooling system and these droplets are said to be sufficiently small to stay suspended in air and while they are still operating and the fog is said to be dispersed through the greenhouse and the cooling the air everywhere is said to be made in this fog cooling system as this system does not wet the foliage there is a less scope for disease as well as the pest attack in fog cooling system and the plant must need to stay dry throughout this process so the fog cooling can be done and uh, which also helps in the improvement of the plant and this system is equally useful for the seed germination as well as propagation since it eliminates the need of mist system in different chambers and while seeing about them both of these types of summer cooling systems can reduce the greenhouse air temperature is the main process which has to be made and while seeing about the percentage on fat bit, uh, fan and pad system they use it to reduce the temperature of incoming air about 80% and uh, meanwhile the fog cooling system can able to reduce the temperature by nearly 100% difference so these are the difference between these two systems and uh, this is due to the complete evaporation of water said to be not taken place of bigger droplet size in fan and pad system varies in fog cooling that is a complete evaporation of the minute size of the water droplets so it's how the difference is made and thus the lesser the dryness of the air greater evaporative cooling system is said to be possible in this greenhouses so after that we are going to see about the active win active winter cooling system and the excess heat can be a problem during the winter and uh, in winter the ambient temperature which is which is said to be below the desired temperature inside the greenhouse warming to the greenhouse effect the entrapment of solar heat can raise with the temperature to an injurious level if the greenhouse is said to be not ventilated so the actual process in the winter cooling system is tempering the excessive cold ambient air before it reaches the plant zone so these are the main objectives of the active winter cooling system and uh, Uh, or else, uh, if it is not said to be done, hot and cold spots in the greenhouse, which is used to lead the uneven cropping time as well as the quality of the crops in the greenhouse. The mixing of low temperature ambient air with the inside warm air, which is said to be cool the greenhouse in the winter. So the two active winter cooling systems are said to be commonly employed, or the convection tube cooling as well as the horizontal airflow (HAF) fan pad cooling system. so these are the two active winter cooling systems said to be present now and while we are going to see about the first one is convection tube cooling while seeing in the conventional tube cooling system the general components of uh, conventional tubes are lower of the air inlet as well as the polyethylene conduction tube with air distribution nozzles and pressurized fan to direct air into the tube under pressure and an exhaust fan to create vacuum in the active winter cooling system pads so while seeing about when the air temperature inside the greenhouse exceeds the set point the excess fan used to start functioning which used to create a vacuum inside the greenhouse so this used to lower the inlet of the cable which is said to be open through which the cold air enters due to the vacuum presence in the greenhouses and by making the pressurized fan at the end of the clear polyethylene conduction tubes which used to pick up the cool air entering the lower and there is said to be a proper gap is said to be available for the air entry at the end of convection tube which is separated at lower inlet by around 0.3 to 0.6 meter and the other end of the tube is said to be sealed so it's how the cooling air is said to be entered into into this greenhouse and the round holes of 5 to 8 cm in diameter are said to be provided in pairs of opposite sides of the tube spaced at 0.5 to 1 meter along the length of the tube So in general the total area of the holes in a single tube should be 1.5 to 2 times the cross sectional area of the tube was said to be present in the greenhouse. So after that we are going to see the horizontal airflow cooling system. 
in horizontal airflow cooling system hgf cooling system used a small horizontal fans are said to be moving across the air masses and is said to be considered as an alternate to convection tubes for the air distribution in this method the greenhouse must be visualized as a large box containing air and the fans located strategically moves the air in the circular pattern in the horizontal airflow cooling system this system should move the air up to 0.6 to 0.9 meter cube per minute per meter square of the greenhouse airflow so the fractional ha horse ha horsepower fan of 31 to 62 watt which is a 1 bar 30 to 1 power 15 hp with a diameter blade of 42 centimeters are said to be sufficient for the operation of horizontal airflow cooling in these greenhouses so the fans are said to be arranged in such a way so that the airflow are said to be directed along the length of the greenhouse and are parallel to the ground the pads are said to be placed around 0.6 to 0.9 meter above the plant heights at an interval of 15 meter and the, uh, they are said to be arranged such that the airflow is said to be directed around one road to the plants along the length of the greenhouse which are said to be downside of the one to the opposite in and then back along the other side by another row of fans so in this type of co cooling system you must need to know the greenhouse of larger width may require more number of rows of fans along its length so these are the properties as well as the principle you must need to remember in this cooling system and uh, after that we are going to see the greenhouse ventilation so it is said to be a process of allowing a fresh air to enter into the enclosed area by drying out the air with undesirable properties so the ventilation is essential for reducing the temperature as well as the CO2 and the controlling relative humidity present in the controlled structure of greenhouse so the ventilation requirement for greenhouse which used to greatly vary depending on the crop growth as well as the season of production and the ventilation system can be either a passive system which is a natural ventilation or it's an active system which is a for forced ventilation using fans so usually greenhouse that are said to be used seasonally employ the natural ventilation only in these greenhouses so the plant respond to specific environment factors said to be related to the psychological process and hence the latter affects the yield and quality is mainly due to the controlling of the environment in to great importance to realize the complete benefit of controlled environmental agriculture in the greenhouse so the manual maintenance of uniform environmental conditions inside the greenhouse is said to be very difficult as well as the cumbersome process which must be taken in the greenhouses a poor maintenance results in less crop production as well as low quality and lower income is said to be made for effective control of automatic cooling system like microprocessors and computers are used to presently maintain the environmental cooling system. So I have already told you there are around two ventilation systems. The first one is natural ventilation which is said to be a direct process where there is no active power source to be near but in forced ventilation there must be need of active fans or, fans or else uh, some other devices to force the air inside of the greenhouse to the outside environment so first i am going to tell about the microprocessors which are said to be used in the ventilation as well as different other properties also also said to be performed in the one of the main stages of the greenhouses so the dedicated microprocessors said to be considered of simple computers and the microprocessors are used to have a keypad with one or two lines of liquid crystal display of something with 80 characteristics length for programming they do not have a floppy disk drive and they are also used to have more output connection which can able to control up to 20 devices with this number of devices it is used to be cheaper cheaper to use a microprocessor in this greenhouse environment and they are said to be used to receive a signals of several types such as temperature light intensity as well as rain and wind speed they permit the integration of diverse range of devices which are said to be not possible with the thermostats. The accuracy of microprocessor for temperature uh, control is said to be quite good enough than some other devices. And after that we are going to see the computers which is said to be a modern technology which is said to be used in greenhouse environment for the control environment. The computer system can provide fully integrated control of temperature, humidity, irrigation and fertigations 
and uh, CO2 light as well as the shade level of virtual any size of growing facility of the particular crop and there is a precise control over the growing operation enable it to realize the saving of 15 to 50 percent of energy water chemicals pesticide applications in the controlled environment of the particular crops the computer used to control normally help to achieve the greater plant consistency on scheduled production as well as the higher overall plant quality and environmental purity in the controlled environment and uh, I am going to tell the advantages of computer. So the all the systems are doing are said to be controlled properly by programming it it with any coordinates and can able to overlap the to provide the optimum environment for the crops in the controlled structure like greenhouses. And they can able to record the environmental data which can be used to display the current conditions or stored and processed one to provide a history of cropping period and it can be decided it may also be displayed in table or graph forms and a high speed computer with network facility can control several remotely located greenhouses by placing the computer in central areas and the result can be monitored frequently by risk management and the computer can be programmed to sound an alert if any become unacceptable and direct sensors and equipment failures are said to be made and precisely watched by the computers and while seeing about the disadvantages of computers, they are said to be initially costly in that investment and they used to need a qualified operators so they can able to operate it perfectly because not an each and every one can able to operate the devices and there is a high maintenance cost care as well as the precautions are to be required for the development of computers in the greenhouse structures and they are said to be not economical for small scale as well as the seasonal production of crops in particular areas so i have given the lecture notes in description so please comment about our video so we can able to improve our video page and uh, join us in the instagram page i have also given the link in the lecture notes as well as the description of the youtube channel so if you like the video like it and share it with your friends and subscribe to bsa agriculture and hit the bell icon to get regular updates so thanks for watching the video i'll catch you up in next videos